Another thing I, I wonder is, you know, when I talk to regular people that are just doing this, I always wonder, are they, are they fearful of their job being lost with all the shit you hear in the news with automation and now the big, the big boys are starting to fire people, layoffs. What do you think in your mind? You think, am I screwed or should I get out? Just as a young person going forward into the future? Yeah. Man, so person, I turned 27 in a couple months. I was in truck driving school the week I turned 21. So I got a little bit of time under my belt now. And you sit back and you think about it, and the last, what, two, three years, the economy has been crazy. And I'm not going to lie, some days it's hard to stay positive with it because it's not a bad, it has its pros and cons, nothing is perfect. You know, so you're making above average money, especially for your education level. If you didn't go to college, you didn't. So I can't really complain if I'm making 70, 80, 90, 100K plus a year. Uh, but it's scary when you're looking at, you want to set up a retirement, you know, 401K, whatever. Right. Uh, or hell, there's my company even going to be a company in 10 years. That's the big one. You know, yeah. So you, you see companies every week folding, and it's like, it is, if you're working for a general carrier, you know, if you, if it's not Walmart, UPS, the LTL companies, Fuel, uh -huh. you really can't say what you're going to be doing five years from now. Maybe even a year from now. Yeah, because some people, some people, some people fold it that's like not supposed to fold. Like, yellow was it? Was it I see one down, yellow one down. Yeah. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. What was crazy, when I was 18, I graduated high school, I was a worker at Yellow. Mm. And so I was doing the whole, oh, yeah, I'm going to drive a forklift for three years, get my CDL. And an older guy, he had been with Yellow like 20 years. And he was like, hey, man, if you want to drive a truck, you want to do that to you? That's fine. He said, I would not work here. He said, this company going to be out of business in the next 15 years. And this was 2016. He just came out. Oh, we was, yeah, we was right next door to ABF, right? He said, "If I was you, I'll go next door to ABF." See that? And what's the difference, really? What do they both do? They both do mail, correct? You know, freight. So general business freight, uh, that's palletized stuff. But the problem was, from what I was told, YRC borrow from you know they overextended their hand. Mm -hmm. or who they can borrow from. So for years, they borrowed from the government when they kept borrowing from the union. And then when the union and the government both said, give me the money, nah, good luck. You know, because you're not paying back the money, but you continue to ask for more. Right. Nobody's going in their right mind, continue on. They just went out of business. Jeez. None of those guys got their pensions or nothing. So Did anyone go to jail? That's crazy, man. But see, see, that's the difference between us long distance guys and then the local guys. Because I've I've played around with local, and I'm gonna be honest, I just haven't found nothing that tickles my fancy in local. So us long like us long distance guys, we live a, we have a higher degree of freedom. May I say liberty? Because we don't really have to go by all the rules they go through. Getting in is not as hard as a lot of other things. But when I see these staples go away, it's like, shit, bro. Maybe I should have went to UPS. But then again, when I see all the rules that the UPS guys got to live by, it's like, nah, that ain't for me. Because they're over-governed. This live, you probably gonna be like, damn, this young man did a lot of shit. <laughs> I used to work at UPS too. Really? And is it as many rules as they say? Is it is it a lot of rules? Oh yeah. It's a lot of rules. I worked at Walmart as well for a year. I had to dip out of there because of the same thing. It was a train or two. No, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I don't know who more laid back. They both 
they both up there. But with UPS, it's a lot of hatred that comes from, I don't know if I'll be able to work there after this, but it's a lot of hatred that comes down from management. You know, they're not union employees, et cetera, et cetera. So um, if you're at a hub where, you know, it's 30 days to get to the union, most places, but you're not working 30 days a second, you don't call or whatever the case may be. So it may take you 60 days to get 30 working days. Mm. And every little thing, if you show up late, if you miss a sort, you know, all of these is big deals when you haul in mail. You don't want to be late. But things like that, accidents, you know, lakes on sorts, um, even to your attire, like not having the right colored socks, the right colored shoes. You got to be brown. So if I mess up and come in in black socks, that's a thing. I've seen a couple of people in black, but I'm quite sure they got a little bit of gusto up on them, you know, time in with the company in the union. So anything that micro, they can get, you know, swept under the rug. So socks, uh, what you wear, what about beards, dreads? I've seen a couple guys with beards. I believe you just can't go too crazy. You know, as anything else, when you need people, you kind of bend the rules a little bit. Uh-huh. Um, from my understanding, back in the day, you couldn't have no, really no facial hair. Definitely no long hair. But wow. as I said, you know, depending on where you're at, you need people that have been the rules. Just don't go too crazy. Don't try to walk in there with the James Harden going on. <laughs> the duck I want you to still look. You know, because they're still providing a service, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you can get hemmed up on. And then not even talking about the employees in a local setting. Mm. You know, there might be a guy that's out there. He waiting on your seniority spot. He waiting on you to quit, leave, anything, because he can jump to your your spot. That's crazy. They see you doing something wrong. You're not pre tripping the truck or you going, you know, 15 miles an hour in the yard. Buddy, buddy with the supervisor trying to get you out of there. I didn't know y'all was going through all that, bro. People stay because of the pay and the benefits. You know, you can ask any UPS driver. A lot of people love the company, but a lot of people say, like, oh, it's not the same company as it was five, two, 20 years ago. But what company is? Yeah. Yeah, my my stepfather, he worked for them for 20 years when I was a kid. But, you know, I was too young to understand what he was going through or not going through. I just knew that, you know, he worked at UPS or whatever. But I never realized the amount of uh, inside stuff that that was going on until I got older and I'm working and I'm starting to see I go to a local job and I'll see the backbiting, the yard gossiping, the you know, the, 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 the penile measurements on what cars we drive, the, it's like, it just gets, or, or everybody wanting to hump that one chick in the office that seems to be at every local terminal or something. And it's like, well, when you're OTR, you don't deal with none of that stuff, bro. You're self-contained. Being so young, it's messed me up already a little bit because all these years, you know, just, Kind of marching at the beating your own job. And now when you start to think about the age and where you want to go local, settle down or whatever, and then you hear what goes on at the places. Because I've had like three local jobs. Mm-hmm. I didn't say none of them longer than two months. Really? What was the main reason you left? Well, like you said, the office politics, you know, it's all, it's all about who you cool with. You know, the local guys, if you cool with that dispatcher, you get the best load. Right, you know, uh, it's it's too much stuff I didn't like, and the fact of having to commute 20, 30, 40 minutes to work, yeah, and having to drive 12, 13, 14 hours at work, yeah. then go home, and then when you go home, it's like, man, I see these guys on Facebook and Instagram. They used to make it seem like they get off after fourteen hours, barbecue, go to the gym, yeah. you know, go to the club, and I'm stumbling in the door, one leg, I'm, man, I just did. You know, a total 17, 18 hour day, and I got to be right back in a few hours. And that's not even counting if you're at a local job that has a two hour ex- uh, exception for traffic. Anyway, where you can work 16 hour days. I would, what, what now? A two hour exception for traffic. And ex- if so, if it's like a road issue, traffic, or anything you got held up, then dispatch would ask you. So you can basically get an extension 14. To 16 hours. So Cisco? Yeah. 
Hey, look, when I say I done done a lot of jobs, man, trying to find my niche, I used to drive a record too. Cisco was our main account. A lot of them guys, 16 hours a day. And even if you finish your route early within 11, 12 hours, they'll send you to help the next guy to make your day 14, 15, 16 hours. They make bread, though. They make a lot of money. I, I, I was shocked at the numbers I was hearing. I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know what? I need to get this long distance up. I'm going to just go to U.S. Foods and Cisco and just, it's 100. And, and I just got to take the abuse. But, you know, I'll be watching videos on it. And I'll be like, man, that shit look brutal, man. Brutal. A lot of guys don't even know that's a pension job. Is it? Yeah, in Chicago, it's a teamsters. But guys don't stick around that long to find out. That's a pension. But see, my... Blue Cross, Blue Shield, pension, you know, it's a whole nine. It's like mid-30s, 40s and all. See, my, my, thing, my thing is with that, that is cool, but that I'm looking at the motions they're doing. I'm like, these dudes knees and backs are going out. There's no way you're going to last 30 years doing that. Yeah. You're, you're going to, you're going to be and See, my thing is I don't want to get there and be totally like wheelchair ridden. Cause that's one thing my, my stepfather used to complain about was his knee and his back. And it's like, man, I could go. I, I always end up regional. Cause that's that's like a that's middle ground. That's the best middle ground. You still can get home to get some cheeks, but you still loosey goosey at work. Like you ain't no one's no one's governing you. So you feel like I run my own life, so I'm I'm good to go. But I mean, a lot of people don't want to do that no more. The truth is, the new gen, new new batch, they're not feeling that OTR crap. They don't see the benefit of you being OTR. They don't see that. And hey, I'm taking one of your uh, your current advices. Our first four or five years, I was in a relationship. I got actually into a relationship in trucking school. And I was in that relationship for like four, yeah, four or five years. And the whole time, this is when you was at the regime and all that. You was mm-hmm. doing the, oh, I mean, you'd have places here and there, but you was doing the whole live out the truck, save your money. Thing. Right. And, Last year, I'm like, I want to try this. Everybody else my age, back home, I'm like, man, Mike, you crazy. You know, you're you going to miss out on this, this, this. And I'm basically like, hey, put all my shit in storage. Actually, on the 15th of this month, I marked a year since I got rid of my spot. So you decided to live out the truck? Mm-hmm. And did go against a cardinal rule of yours. What was that? After you see the money grow. Uh-huh. One day I was sitting there on board. Well, I, you know, no. I went to the dealership, bought a Mustang. Why, bro? Why does that always happen, dog? So, but I'm going to tell you, I'm thinking about getting rid of it within the next month because I end up taking another job where I'm not really around like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so pulling step deck now and it's awesome old TR. So, so uh, I don't really need it. So, and that's what I told y'all fools in the beginning. You don't need it, bro. It's like, I want it, but you're not, if you really get serious about your career and get used to what you're doing, you hardly ever going to see that joint. Yep. Cause uh, this is the thing that no one talks about. Cause we're going to, we're going to circle back to the financial freedoms of letting that stuff go and how your money stack. We're going to circle back to that. If you become a decent trucker, there's fun stuff to do on the road. People keep lying like it isn't. You know, you can go to Vegas at a whim. You can just say home time Vegas and you're in Vegas. And that's it. You So so the world becomes your back. The, the, the nation becomes your backyard. Think about the people at home. And the study shows that the average person doesn't go 14 miles away from their house. Ever. Nice. But so when they say who never left the county, never left the county. So when they when your auntie says, oh, girl, I was so far away. She talking about the second Walmart away. That's about as far as she went. So when you say, "I right, man, I'm, I'm going to do I'm going to do Malibu or I'm going to do Vegas. No, nah, I'm going to do Florida. And you're saying three thousand mile differences like it's up the street. Like there is a privilege to that. You could you could just say this year I'm Miami for my birthday. And all it is, once the load drops and you park the truck and go to the hotel, you're in Miami for your birthday. It's like that simple. So it's one of them things where 
people are so wound up with what's going on at home, not realizing there's nothing going on at home. Nothing is going on at home, bro. Tell them all the time. I say, you want to go home to be broke like everybody else? And that's what's going on. As long as you touch down, everybody in need of something or everybody going through something. And the, tr- the truth is, like you said, you're single right now, right? Yeah. Your wife ain't at your hometown, bro. That's a fact. I met my wife in Utah. Yeah. I'm from Virginia. And she met me in Utah. And she from Philadelphia. Your wife's not home, bro. And that's one thing cats don't ever get. You wonder why you're having problems with chicks at home? I'm going to tell you some, some, some crap that a, a white boy told me. Even if you come from a big city. Small town, small mind. When you run into people who don't ever plan on leaving Chicago, their thought process is like, it's it's not even close to yours. You may say some shit to a chick like, well, you know what? I was thinking of saving the money up, getting a modular home, putting it in Mississippi for under $100,000. And to her, you're talking about living in Mars. But to to you, you thinking... I can leave it for months at a time. It don't cost nothing. I can have land. You know what I'm saying? It's right on my route. I can, I can always get a route to it. It's close to Atlanta, so I know there's loads. Like, you're thinking like that. You're thinking I could buy the house, go back on the road for a year, put a barn up, go back on the road for a year, put a fence up, and build my perfect little crib. You're not going to wrap some hometown chick's mind around that. She's going to say, what is it to do in Mississippi? Is there black people in Mississippi? That's the same thing they'll be saying. I'll be naming places now like Utah, Colorado, you know, because I like the West Coast. Uh, you know, Me too. And they'd be like, what's the first thing? What's out there? What's here? It's I can't give, me, I give me five readers. You want to stay in Chicago? Nobody ever gotten past two. Yeah. Food, my family here, nothing. And that's it. And number three is what they're not going to tell you, the fear of what they think they're going to miss out on. That's crazy. And my thing is, that's what I'm trying to say. The truth is, and this is something that y'all don't do because y'all feel like, I don't know if you and personally, but y'all feel like y'all don't want to hit no truckers. And I be trying to tell y'all that's the move, bro. Who understands Big Mike's life better than an OTR female trucker? Who gets it? On top of that, what is the... How could Big Mike double his income? She get on the truck with you. You doubled your income. Who's going to be willing to live in an offshoot state? Someone who drives through them, who knows them. What's better than having working, cooperating butt cheeks right there on the truck? There's no better deal than that. The truth is the winners are two people in trucking, bro. The trainers and the husband and wife couples, those are the two winners in trucker. Oh, they won't. And, and on YouTube, there's a lot of little cute chicks out here uh, OTR in it. What are y'all doing? Y'all going all the way back home to hit a chick that ain't got no job. I don't understand it, bro. I don't understand it. You know she ain't shit. I've messed around with one female trucker. It was cool. She had own authority, you know, and it was, it was, you know, that's my end goal. You know, one of these years, never I feel like I'm ready. But uh, she was like a year younger than me, so 25, 26. And it was cool, but I maybe I just wasn't ready. You know, if it was like maybe a few years down the line. Right. I'm not in the streets on or nothing like that. Right. But it's just, I'm so locked in on the new journey I set out on. Right. To just try to run and job because eventually I want to get into my next I want to get an RGN and mm. exercise. Yeah. So I got tired of pulling the van and reason which is why I left the likes of Walmart, UPS, because people job job when they said, man, you left them jobs? Well I said if you love what you do, it's never worked. And at that I was more stressed at those jobs. The checks were reflecting, but the stress wasn't working. Yeah, the stress is what's gonna kill you. You could pay me a hundred forty thousand dollars a year and be stressed or you could pay me Eighty four and be happy. I'm taking eighty four a year in. But see, 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 you know the ancient revolutionary secret. Step decks a walk in the park. Once you learn what you're doing, this shit is cake walk. Y'all it looks hard to y'all, but for real, once he learns how to chain, 
and he realized if I go step deck, I don't even tarp that much. That's another thing they don't. Oh, I'm a, I'm at a company, um, and you can talk to Loshan about it. And he was looking, and I tried to uh, get him over here. Uh, it's 100 percent no tarp. I don't even carry tarps. How the hell is that possible? Equipment loads. So you only equipment. For the most part, uh, once like I'm in Wyoming right now, so I got to pick up the giant spools, you know, run a chain through them, whatever. But some when you get out in the middle of nowhere, is when you start picking up general freight. But when you in Chicago, different ports on the East Coast or whatever, it's, it's equipment all day long, and that can shoot you anywhere in the country. You could pick up something out of Savannah and head to Portland, Oregon. Mm. Four chains, and you gone for three thousand miles. They don't know that. Hell, you know, Thor Miners two chain. They on their tape. So they, it's, it's easy. You in and out, you know. And it's, don't mind, you know, doing tarping. But in this place is like this out there. I mean, would that be the first step that carrier? And then doing a lot of equipment and no tarp load, it's going to be hard to go to a place where you got a guy that tests them tarp. Man, uh, you're, uh, man, they don't know that they put the, they put the trilling on there. You go to one side, put the chain, go to the other side, put the chain, binder it down, do your little bungee with the binder. Done. They're going to leave this stuff outside. You don't got to worry about it. And it, it, it hauls, be let me tell you something, hauls beautifully. 27,000 pounds in the middle of a step deck. You don't even feel that, bro. You out of here. It's, it's easy work. And no one should have said it years ago. That, man, if I... You know, my only problem is always I, I take my old lady with me. And when I deal with st flatbed places, they always hit you with a mid roof. That shit is annoying, man. I'm in a condo here, uh, Volvo 760. Really? Yeah. Everything is condo. Yeah. I'm shoot you the name of the place on ID. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got to shoot me that link. You got to shoot me that link on that one because I love me some mm -hmm. work. Uh, it was some people frown at the CPM, but honestly, you're not gonna believe what I'm about to say. And I and I'll even drop you check stubs, and I'm I'm not even running that hard. It's a it's another notch to my running that I can pick up. Mm -hmm. But I took a pay cut from the driving company I was at to come over here, and I'm making more here than I was at the driving company. So they giving you miles then? You you it's no miles. So you're, 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 most of your time is running days. You're doing full fledged running days. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty. Soon I pick up tomorrow in Wyoming. I deliver Wednesday in South Bay, Indiana. Hmm. 16. What's that? Mm -hmm. what's, that's about, a, that about 1200, a little under 1200 miles. That's a straight through. Yep. Right on I 80. The winter's going to be a bitch for you. Because you got to run the bad hunt. I ran. You know, the United States winter, like, but it was like Nebraska. And then I ran, you know, obviously from Illinois, Chicago, and I ran all that. But, hey, y'all, I'm, I'm paying a little attention to the Wyoming, Utah, Oregon. And it's it's going to be brutal <laughs> during the winter, bro. All right. So that's, and that's another thing. Everybody else taking home time and enjoying their summer, whatever. I'm trying to throw up every dollar I get yeah. into the bank. Because the winter's coming. You ain't going to be running that hard in the winter. The, the truth is, you got, they probably, this is a scary thing. If they do run you that hard in the winter, you're going to have to come proficient at the Badlands because I, that's what I did. I got with a company that didn't care nothing about winter. You're you're going. Idaho, you're going. Up 90, you're going. You got to get proficient in it. Once you get proficient in it, winter don't mean nothing to you. But when you tell somebody you coming from Wyoming or Idaho, because most of the people that look like us, they stay in the L. They stay from New York, Connecticut to Florida, to the west of Texas, and that's where they stop. They ain't interested in going nowhere else. They may go all the way to Vegas and L.A. on the 10th, but all that other stuff in the country, no interest in it. They don't want to go to the South Dakotas, North Dakotas, Idaho's, Oregon's. They're not interested in any of that because they want it to where, for the most part, it's flat, and I never have to worry about snow. But what they don't understand is that's where a lot of the cheap shit be at, too. Yep. Because they know you're not dealing with nothing. If you ever pulled a load out of, of Florida, you know that if you're going in, it may be okay, but coming out, 
You know, that's what that's a beautiful thing about CPM, because that ain't your business. It's going to be what it's going to be regardless. Miles, I mean, it's steady. I'm I'm steady in it. 26 on the bad, about 25 on the bad, but I've had as high as 37, anywhere between. But it's, they pay you for a lot of other stuff. They not hesitant to give you your layover. Mm. So park here Friday because my load don't pick up till tomorrow. So that's an easy, probably 350 just for sitting. Now I prefer to be running, but you know, it's you making your money. So, so it's a certain amount of, they pay you if you don't have a, a reload after an hour. We start getting paid. Really? That is crazy. The money adds up, and they're not, you don't really have to chase them for nothing. Like, you'll look at your, your stuff and be like, downtime on the third. What was that down on the third? But $60. Mm. So, yeah, I'll definitely shoot you some stubs. Yeah, that, that see, uh, I think, well, that's beautiful, man. Like, that's one thing. So, uh, how was that helping you with uh, being gone like that with the shorty wop? How that's going to, how that's going to work? Because most of these guys that's out like this, they have no understanding of what are their resources for dating. How, how are they going to date somebody you gone 60 days uh, at a time? It's just maturity now. You know, you got to know. I tell them, like, hey, this female's going to find interesting. And I'll be like, hey, I'm not, I'm not interested. You know, like, you still get out, have fun or whatever, but as for dating, I mean, and I tell them, technically, I don't even live nowhere. So how do I know where to even get into a relationship at? You right. know, and that's the first part. And then you have to decide, like, what's more important to you right now? Getting to that end result? Or the butt cheeks? Cats ain't doing 30, 40, 60 days, no butt cheeks, bro. You can't. I don't... Like this, it's September. The only time I've seen in Chicago, when I was coming through the yard, because the company is based in the suburbs of Chicago, uh, so sometimes if I'm at the yard or whatever, I'll hop in the car, go see family or whatever. If I got extra downtime, but actually requesting home time. So if I started here in June, I haven't requested yet. So I got over two, two ish weeks I can take right now. And just, I haven't even touched. And my birthday is in November. So I'm probably just going to book me a little seven day cruise or something. It disappear. And we know what goes on on them cruises. Jesus Christ. I never took one. All I hear say, but we're going to find out. We'll find out. Yeah, I heard it's, it's off the chain on those cruises. I mean, when I was a single man out there, OTR, and I was doing four months at a time. And basically, you know, I was in conversations with, you know, I would use uh, certain apps. I think back then it was like, it was like you, you pulling some stuff off Instagram, obviously. Um, you pulling some stuff off the different little, you know, sites or whatever. But what you do is you get in long term conversations because you never know when you're going to run into these people. So you've been talking to chicks. Just it's a lot of talking to people that don't live near you. That's that's what it ends up being. And depending on if you have a mature conversation, depending on if, you know, you, you, you know, you're a cool person. You know, it can it, it'll be like, OK, I can't wait till you come here. Once you get the green light of that eventually you gonna slide through eventually yeah. and when you slide through you know i mean i don't i don't had cheeks come to the truck stop knock you off and just leave that's always a beautiful thing call that a pop and drop you know what i'm saying it, it, it's a good situation but i've never messed up a load to get to it that's the thing that people don't understand you got to get good at your clock to understand how to slide and get some cheeks and not mess up your money and a lot of dudes, they'll come in and they'll just stay for two days and make the load late. You can't do that. You cannot do that, bro. You have to, you have to know how to, you know what I'm saying? You got to know how to look at your time and know what you can do. And that's the big thing that ends up happening. But the most of the time, like you said, man, it's it, the one thing that's going to mess up your shit is, is, is cheeks. That's the one thing that's going to mess up your money. Cause you, you stacking money right now, Mike. I know you stacking a bunch of money right now. And yeah, it took me a little while to recruit from the you know, guy in the same, so I had to, you know, have a little discipline. Uh, but I'm, I'm sitting. But honestly, to be honest with you, I am in a way better situation today than I was a year ago. A year ago, I was an old, old. And listen, we ain't gonna talk about the old versus company thing because they don't want to hear the truth. Uh -huh. But I'm in a way better situation today than I was a year ago, and that's a combination of. 
uh, you know, giving up the rent because I was never home. Mm. So I'm paying seventeen hundred dollars. So basically, a glorified storage unit. Then you could have paid three four hundred for just a storage unit. Yep. If, if I'm paying about one eighty for a storage unit. So you got rid of a lot of stuff. Yeah, basically. So you just got. This- I'm not gonna lie to you. I've been looking at different areas. Um, I filled out some applications for some houses and whatnot, but the only thing that stopped me, I don't want to run into that same situation where you're going three, four, five weeks at a time and you're paying two grand for a place and all that. So unless I can get that real solidified local position, you know, I'm not here on the road, no, then paying that storage bill is not worth it. it man, I, I, I take it from someone who I realized Living in a big city is not for working class people. I live somewhere that is so cheap. Like, I'm under a thousand a month. Two bedrooms, garage, the whole shit. You know, security door, intercom, all I got something like that. They all over the place, man. It's just that it's here's the thing. The reason why you're probably never gonna run into it as young as you are, they're never near fun. Cause there's nothing here. But see, I don't really. I'm laid back. That now you you know, once you get to know me, you if you if I never would have told you my age, you probably would have thought I was 35. True, I would have thought you was like 35 years old. So so I'm chilling, laid back. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'll give some states that people should look into. Iowa, dirt cheap. Nebraska's dirt cheap, but it's ghetto. But your but your your uh your Iowa's. The uh your uh 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 suburbs of Wisconsin, cheap. Um um, what's the other one? There's another one, Arkansas, dirt cheap. Do not go to Little Rock. You want to know another cheap one? What? Well, I'm gonna just give you the city, El Reno, Oklahoma. And Oklahoma's dope. See, I the other day when I was going through there, we were looking on Zillow. I seen brand new construction homes, thirteen hundred dollars a month. Giving them away. Just giving them away. I said I haven't seen these prices in what three years? But you have years maybe. But you have to understand one thing you have to realize when you do this. You will ha- if you move to those places, you will have to get your money from somewhere else. So there is no I'm gonna move here and go local. The reason it's that cheap is because these people don't pay a lot of money here. The way you the way you abuse this situation is to get your money from somewhere else. And the best way for us to do that is an OTR position. So you come in town, you ball out of control for a week. And then you leave. Now, if you decide to go local, you're going to look on uh, ND and they're going to be saying 19, 20 dollars an hour. Sure. And they, mm-hmm. n- nobody got time for that. It's, it is disrespectful. So it's like, oh, why is it this cheap? Because they know it's the cost of living. It it matches the cost of living. So what the white boys do, they live way far flung out and they do OTR their whole freaking career. And if they do go home, they do something that most black people don't know to do, which is work the harvest. Wait, that term I didn't hear until I was 36 years old. Work the harvest. What you? I didn't know nothing about it. Like you'll see them. But you didn't know how to deal with it. Yeah. And they will hire you right off the street. You can just call them. They'll just say, come get in the truck. And and, and you'll do three, four weeks, depending on which harvest, and make $30,000. So there's people in these far-flung places. That's all they do. They do the harvest and then live on the $30,000 the whole year because it's cheap here. And a lot of them have been doing it for so many generations. They live in a house that's already paid off or a trailer. I don't know what they got going on. And, and then they'll work another job. So I, I was in a place where people worked a regular job all year and every job knew that the people were leaving for the harvest. So now they made twenty five, thirty thousand dollars in the harvest for a month, maybe month and a half or two. And then they go back and work their regular job that pays, what, thirty, forty thousand dollars. They make a sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year. You see what I'm saying? So it's like there's things that has not been pushed to us that we don't even understand that every state damn near. Every state besides the desert ones have a harvest, especially where we from all that. All, Illinois got a bunch of uh, farms. They have a harvest. Virginia has harvest time. We never even thought to think that we could go in here and make 
five, six thousand dollars a week. And if you get your own truck, man, forget about it. You didn't heard about the harvest season as a whole. Yeah. Because yeah, it's right now, owner op, and I personally don't suggest nobody to owner op right now. It's just, it's, it's, it's until they, I wouldn't owner up again. Or I wouldn't lease again until the government comes in and really checks these companies. Cause a lot of crap is going on that just, it just doesn't help you. You'd be better off just knowing you're going to get a check every week. Yep. Cause I, I've done it and it's like, it's never, I, I would prefer just knowing what my check's going to be and be left alone just for a stress level thing. That's how I am now. And that's coming from somebody in their twenties, man. You know, and I try to tell people it's an ego thing. Mm. Cause uh me and my last lady, we were getting to a lot of just arguments about it. Like, you know, you kind of see both sides where it's like they want you to reach your potential. But I've been around long enough to where I've leased. You know, I was at the regime, then I also I was at RST too. So at both of them, and I did good. And, you know, Taylor Lynn was just, that was just a wash. I, now I was too young to be thinking I can lease anything at that time. <laughs> and then when I'm, when I see a negative $300 check and I'm livid, but, you know, know what you know now? I've had guys at the ports, you know, and I'm asking them, you know, used to get tricked out trucks, you know, mm -hmm. W9s and Pete's. And I'm like, man, you know, hey, I want to do that one day, and they they saying like, man, how much you make? You know, what's your average of your checks? I tell them, they stay where you at. That's true. If your check is, if your check, if you can pull it without even trying, if you can pull a fifteen, sixteen hundred dollar check, don't move. If it ain't even hard for you to hit that, you're you're fine. And here's another thing. health insurance. I got a Blue Cross Blue Shield PPO. How many trucking companies are giving out PPO Blue Cross Blue Shield? Yeah, I'm about to come over there and, and get some of that money. You you getting way you living way too good over there. I'm about to slide well, on that joint. So it's, that's another thing too that people don't even talk about. One of the questions if I call a recruiter, it seems overlooked and overrated. I ask what type of health insurance they got because that'll tell you the turnover of the company. Oh yeah, if it's high turnover, they're not going to invest in good health insurance at all, at, at all. And if they're something like Aflac or whatever, what? if they're cheaping on your health, they're cheaping on everything else. I can tell that you're in a premium globe trotter just by your seat stitching. Oh, yeah. I can tell that because you go to another company, that joint just be a, a cloth prison seat. That's it. Yeah. You got the heat, uh, heating and cool seats with yeah. and all the side. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you got the air massager and all that. So it's like, yeah. That, for a company. 2020, 2023, you would have 2023, uh, the trailer and the truck 2023. Mm, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Those that those things matter because they're investing in. Okay, I hope you stay. I hope you stay. And my thing is, I haven't even now, but I've messed myself up doing YouTube because I have a prominent name in YouTube. Even now, I haven't found my forever company. I thought my forever company was going to be Western Distribution. But, I'm actually staring at one of their trucks in front of me right now. Listen, they got it good, bro. They got and they have an armored division. I looked into them. They seem the pay seemed a little lower. Maybe the advertisement wasn't up to date, but um, that was something you brought up as well. And I started looking because you'll see them a lot on uh, seventy in Colorado. The average, yeah, that's where they be at, Colorado, Colorado, and Wyoming actually. Um, uh, that's where the two terminals are at. The average person that's there right now has been there 16 years. The uh, average age of a person driving for them is 50. So they're running into a problem where their people are aging out and they're going to start taking people. If you had your concealed weapon carry, which I don't know if you have any charges or not, if you don't, if you get your concealed weapon carry and you can do the armored division, which is you're going to get the same thing regardless of whatever happens. Like they're just going to keep giving it's like almost a salary. And then, then you're dropping off things to under, you know, places we don't even know and we don't even know what it is. Um, you can get a long nose if you choose. The only problem is you got to have a manual. Yeah. Oh, you, oh, you got that off your license. Yeah. yeah. So if you can drive a manual, you in. But I mean, there, I got messed up because I have a fear of flying. 
They wanted to fly me in. I get on the plane, and the plane has engine trouble. So I freak the hell out. I, so when they say, y'all get off the plane while we fix this engine trouble, I told them, I, I'm not about to get on a plane that has engine trouble. Let's just, let's just get that out of the way. And she marked me as unhirable because I didn't get on the plane. I was like, damn, well, you going to do me like that? That's a real phobia. Flying is a real phobia. What you mean? And then the plane, I'm, my phobia is the plane is going to break down. And then the plane breaks down. What the fudge? I'm supposed to get on here and be like, oh, you screw it? Nah, man. So I was like, come on, man. You can't give me a, just give me a rental car and I'll drive it. She was like, nah. So now I'm unhirable there because they say I, I didn't uh, show up to orientation. I said that. Other good places, uh, I called on my age in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. I, I just need to get the hazard and doors and back. But I like what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. but, Dude, you, you, uh, knowing where you at, you ain't about to do that. You're not about to be having the truck move 24 hours a day. You not about to play them games, bro. I was one of the reasons why I left UPL. I just hated team. And that's and there you have to. Yeah. I, I was thinking, I was like, can I go there without team? Like, no, they got a team. I would when I I told him when he told me where he was at. I told him, bro, I would have been here three years ago if they would have had me as a solo. Then I pulled up the emails or whatever. I was talking to the recruiters. I said, when I would have been here three years ago, and I would call every month for two three years. Are you firing hiring solos? No, no. I mean, the the, nat no. the nature of their stuff, it, it puts the stuff at risk when you stop and sleep. You, they can't. I mean, it's a beautiful deal and all that, but uh, I'm I, I t like I told Go Phoenix, I'm too old. I'm not interested in running that hard. I'm just not interested. He don't even seem like he working. I'm jealous. Man. When you when I talk to him, he'd be like, oh, I don't even run that hard. And it's like I feel you, but. I don't want to sleep while the truck's moving. I'm just that old and cranky, bro. I just don't want to do that. That takes a different person. But, you know, he's used to it. He trained before. Him. And I know I don't like me. I can't. No. And then you got to trust that other person. I got a hard time trusting my old lady, bro. I don't like when she drives, bro. <laughs> I only let her drive my car when I'm in it. Like, I, And she has a clean record, but it's just like I don't like the feeling. I want to control the rumble strips. Oh my God, that's the worst. I'm going off the road. We're crashing. Couple seconds. <laughs> We're crashing right now. That's what's happening to me. So I, I don't think I don't think it's a, a bad deal. I just know that I know for me, if I could find the end result specialized flatbed company, I will retire from it. And there's one in Texas that I've been looking at that they basically 80% specialize. They don't do nothing else. All of it's weird RGN trailers, and they give you a minimum. But I was thinking, I was thinking about that's the way people are gonna get into the long to the heavy haul stuff through them because that's basically all they doing. And they don't be don't be afraid to name dropping the DMs. The step deck nice, but I wanna I'm trying to get lower because when I was driving the records, I was doing low boy in RGN. I just didn't feel comfortable enough doing it over the road, so I chose step deck because I knew that was something that I had to handle. But I did excavators and all of other stuff. To, Mm -hmm. Besides Lowe's in Chicago, but if I could find that right company that'd be patient and just give me, let me get back into that groove, and not expect me to, you know, just all right, here's the paperwork, here's the keys, get up out of here, Man. you know. Yeah. But I mean, it's I'll, I'll name drop the joint. Another one, if you're an entry level, is Systems. I was looking at them as well. The, if you, but you got to do a year flatbed, and then they'll uh. The, I mean, they say you can get in the oversized. I'm hoping it's not a, you know, a thing where they just going to flatbed bench you forever. Another one is ATS. I, was at them also. I don't like their pay scale, but, you know, they, they do do a lot of long distance uh, RGME type stuff. They got they got that going on. The thing is, I found with a lot of places, um, even Valley, Valley is a good one. But everybody wants you to start out on the step for three, six months. And it's like, if I'm already on the step, that should be enough, it's, you know, but, but they want you to prove it to them. Yeah. And the most of these places got a waiting list for you. Yeah. The truth is, is who they like gets it. That, that's one thing. As I get older and I learn in life, there's no proving. It's I put it, I'm using this as an incentive. And I give it to who I want. That's what it ends up being. That's why when you see most of those uh, heavy haul dudes, they're white. 
they're white old dudes. It's, it, that's, it, even if you were trying to owner op it, it's like once you're trying to get to those type of loads, you're going to run into white old dudes and they're usually, you know, it's usually closed off. But I, I, um, I like step deck. I thought to my mind, I said, I may, I may just be like, I'm good at step deck because I, I did heavy haul for a while and man, all that, that freaking, uh, going to the scale house, that shit get old. That shit get old. Every 75, 80 miles, you have to and Everyone having permits, following DOT gives you a route and sometimes they route be messed up. And it's like, and uh, it, it, you you can only drive it during the day. You can only go fifty five miles an hour. It's like it gets it gets old, man. A good excavator that fits the dimensions on a step deck and you can go full speed. That's love. That's love. I'll send you over some photos of loads I've done so far, whether it's general freight or equipment. Um, the biggest thing I've did so far was a uh, one of the front end loaders. Mm. I don't really like doing that on the step. Because it brings the heights like four, fourteen and a half. Mm. So you had to be on the back. That's the biggest thing. And I took that for what was it? A P eight from a Volvo plant all the way to Portland, Oregon. Mm. See if they would have gave you the right trailer. But that's all they have over here: steps. But they don't have the ones with the uh, wheel wells built into the side, where it can drop down. No low, no low profile. And see, my problem with that is if the company was not being uh, lazy, they would take the take the tires off so it can drop two feet. But they like, nah, drop it off as is. Just deal with it. Did you have to uh, take the uh, exhaust pipe? Yeah. Yeah, take the exhaust pipe and all that type. I like those loaders, man. Did they make you drive it? When I was at Wiley, some of these places like, oh no, you can drive it, and I learned quickly. I don't know how to drive one of these. I have no idea what I'm doing. Now, I've driven one before because I had a state highway job. I had a lot of jobs, man, and you learn to drive skid steers, front end loaders, but you can't really. My thing is, you can't see the trailer, mm. and so especially when you're at the port, like you're in Baltimore, and you're loading your own equipment, and they be like, yeah, it's over here at this lot, this building, go load it. It's like. I don't have no spotter. I don't have nothing. Like, you, know, you just don't trust me with this, whatever, how much yeah. this is, piece of equipment. And if it falls off the trailer, it's, it's on you. Right. And my problem is, cool. it's a feeling you get when you're driving anything onto a step deck and you hit the ramp and it goes up like this. Or or, or you feel around, I have to back this on. You got to back it on. Man. And then when you get to the tilting part, it's like, and you're like, oh my God, man. You don't know if you're sliding off the side because if you slide off the side of that joint, that's it. I seen a guy at the port and he was driving me. Telling him, mm. I guess he didn't have a trailer brake set. But thankfully, the two front wheels, he was bagging it on. So the front wheels was all soon as he got on. It like that drop, the whole truck and trailer slid. And I said, man, luckily you had your wheels on. Yeah. But I set both brakes, but when I say not having, I bought wheel chocks the next day. Yeah, immediately. So I was like, man, now crazy. you, but now you see why wheel chocks is a is a must in it wherever you load something because this type of weight. I remember more, my the thing I hate in flatbed the most is coils. Coils putting all that weight on one point of the trailer. I mean, thirty thousand, thirty eight thousand pound coils. I was doing that at Melton. That shit is nerve wracking. I hate loading it. I hate tarping it. Every time I hit the brake, I'm scared. It's going to roll through the trailer. Like, you going down the mountain with that bitch. So, you know, if you crash, it's a wrap. So, it's, but my thing, and it's cheap. That's another thing, too. It's freaking cheap because it's the, I tell you all the time, the raw material ain't paying you nothing, bro. It's when you, when, when that coil gets dropped off at Volvo. And then on the other side, the step deck is taking the finished product. He's getting paid. But when you're hauling just tubes of steel, and they ain't paying nothing for that, bro. That's that's nothing. The finish with that loader is a million. I mean, depending on which so what size it is, that thing would be three million dollars. You know, excavators can be four, six, seven million dollars. You know what I mean? I went to a place. All I could get was the bucket. 
they'll always give me the bucket and I'm seeing the cast like, why when I get the whole thing and nah man take this bucket and this track get out of here and it was like nah putting buckets but, on yeah putting buckets on the shit so it was like I enjoyed it I enjoyed flatbed and everything like that but my biggest problem was um I my weight uh, my weight was getting away from me you know what I'm saying since I've been home I've lost like 40 pounds bro now, so I'm kind of trying to, my pops drove for years, and now in his 50s, and he don't drive no more, he just health got away from him. And then that's the one thing he told me, because he didn't want me nowhere near a truck. He was like, you know, go do something else, you know. Because uh, for 2018, I think I stopped like maybe two years after I started driving, but I was a fireman for like five years. And now that's what I wanted to do career-wise. My family still kind of put in my ear you know, every now and then it's like, oh, when are you going to go back to such and such? And I'm like, well, kind of see, I got a good opportunity now, you know, with the, the savings potential. Mm-hmm. I want to get back into that frame to where I'm, like you said, enjoying the country. Cause I was like that my first year and a half. But then when I started chasing the money, it, it I got on it from having fall. It ruined it. That uh, The best time I, and I, lo- I ruined. I stopped having fun in trucking as soon as I tried to own the equipment. Then the fun was gone. But m- my best time was melting truck lines. Flat bedding, didn't own anything. Flat CPM was the best time driving truck. As soon as I switched over to trying to own it and get some of the profit out of it, I, it, it was the bane of my career. And I used to think, how can I want to do 30 years and not own it? But it's like, I see how. I see how, because them dudes own houses, cars, put their kids through college and all that. And the truth is, 98% of owner ops ain't doing that. They got a nice truck, but their health is messed up. They got a nice truck, but their real car is beat up. They got a nice truck, but they stay in a shitty uh, shotgun house. Like, it's always a, you know, it's a, it's a, they don't have both. I used to be in these orientations with the uh, Walmart and UPS guys. When I was at Walmart, this was... Right after I left RST, this was 2021. And, you know, nobody at that time, because the economy was booming, racing through the roof. I'm not driving for Walmart. I don't want to have a camera in the truck. I, you know, I want to be able to talk on the phone. You know, I don't want to wear a white shirt. Right. <laughs> and these are guys that was 40, 50 years old at the time, maybe 24. Maybe some I'm super young. Mm-hmm. So barely just met the 30 months experience to get in the world. So and these guys, I'm like, man, I want to stay here for like a year, save some money and do all that. They was like, don't do it. I've had fleets, I've had drivers, I've had equipment. And they was like, for you to have a job this young, you win it. They said, you can stay here for the next 30, 35 years if you wanted to, and make a hundred thousand dollars minimum every year. The guy who trained me at Walmart, I still I'm still cool with him. And he's also you and him is kind of the reason why I'm going where I'm going today. Because mm-hmm. I had a long conversation with him about that car notes. Mm-hmm. He got on me too about paying that the card notes mm-hmm. and uh, the rent that and he's like, man, I'm proud of like what you're doing. You taking the initiative to, you know, better yourself long term. He's like, because I couldn't do it. He's like, because he don't even like being in the truck five days. Yeah. But he told me last year at Walmart, he made $167,500. Craziness, bro. His house is paid off. His cars is paid off. And his wife make about sixty grand working for a hospital in the town they live in. That's no stress. And I imagine these guys, because I would argue with authority on his own house. And I'd be like, oh, you know, you're a company driver, you slave and or whatever. I said, man, these guys at UPS, Walmart, when they leave that truck on the weekend, they not worry about it till the next Monday or Tuesday. These guys going to the lake, they on boats, mm-hmm. they grilling, they yeah, not worried about nothing. The truth is, they also walk a tight rope with the rules. <laughs> they walk up there. There's two things they they worry about: tight rope with the rules, if the union negotiations go correctly, because sometimes they, uh, sometimes their benefits is good. Sometimes negotiations don't go well and they lose something. Sometimes, you know, they're dealing with that. And the, 
and then like you saying if you got to be that type see I, the truth is i'm not that type of nigga bro i learned that about myself number one you can't say anything you want to me and if you can't live within that structure of there's higher ups that can say anything they want to you then there's a few things you can't do in life you can't work a serious corporate job you can't work a military type of job and you can't work a UPS type of old dominion type of job those jobs you have to be able to deal with uh i guess the best word would be hazing you can't haze me you say something stupid to me I i'm gonna jump out the window on your ass and i already know that th that don't work at ups bro. that don't work at walmart you know you need that job and they know they know how much you make it they know it's a good job they know you got one of the better jobs in the industry they can get away they can get away, they can get away with it and i'm one of them dudes that i'll burn all this shit down i don't i don't care about none of that I, I'm a street nigga. I, I come from being homeless, though. I, I, it doesn't. It doesn't. You can't hold that over me because I do not worship money to that degree. And that's the question people have to start asking themselves: How much do you worship money? If you worship it at all, because some people don't worship money at all. And but you know, they say, well, they don't have nice shit. Well, you're speaking from a position of worshiping money and possessions. You as sooner or later, you're gonna have to pick a side, as your grandmother would say: You can't serve two gods. You got to choose one. Now, you may say, I prefer to be, I, you need money to live in this, this society. We know that. But the, when you start shaving off your, your principles or how a person can treat you just to get to the money, then you end up in a shitty situation. And my thing is, you're not going, I'm, I'm a grown man. You're not going to disrespect me. I don't care if you're the supervisor or not, because it's not needed. It's not needed. You're doing that to get off on it. It's not needed. And if you try that with me, I'm going to jump out the window and it never works. It never works because it's like you ain't go that did not tell you or you got to got to is a strong ass word. I don't got to do a motherfucking thing but stay black and die. That's the only two things I got to do and pay taxes. Yeah. That's it. Everything else is optional. Well, don't you need this money? See, now you in my fucking business. You're you're determining how you're going to treat me based on if I need the money. That ain't right. Yeah, this is not you got to put up with, man. I I got saved at Walmart about twice. Yeah. Twice or three times. And it was only because I was a good guy. It's like, hey, we know you're a good guy. You're a good driver. But the rules, but technically, you can be out of here right now. Yeah. And it was like, one was like a speed situation. Um, the camera, I was in a construction zone. I mean, I didn't do the 55. It was a Sunday. It was nobody in the You blew that bitch. Everybody was doing the regular interstate speed. And then, um, but yeah, I guess I had a whole bunch of, the wall would only go 65 anyway. Right. So, but it wasn't like I was doing 80. So, but it was so many events that the Lytics camera picked up. He called me in the office for one event. But he seen it was like five or six. And it's like Walmart has a strike policy. It's like three strikes. And then once you get that fourth, you're out. And so he could have put all those into four and then just. And, 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 and see, to me, to me, that means that this isn't a stable job because that can happen. Yeah. You know, you can hit a curve, go down there and be absent minded for six minutes and your whole job is gone. To me, that that's not stability. That's that's not stability, bro. Like that, 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 I don't think that's stability because you could just have an off day. You know, what if your daddy died, and you driving, but you ain't even really paying attention, and you you didn't you didn't hit you driving, you went down a hill, you didn't joint, so you got a speed one. That's one strike. Then at the bottom of that hill, there's a construction. You go through there. That's going through construction. That's that's a second strike. Your sister calling you about the, your funeral stuff. You touch your phone. That's a. I mean, I'm out of here. Yep. So I would have to be at that point. Y'all want a computer? I'm a, I'm, a, I have a emotions and you know what I'm saying like things can happen. And they'll ride. They'll um, I don't think a lot of people well Walmart drivers know, but they have people from the office or higher offices that you never even seen before. They'll ride up and down the interstates and look for Walmart trucks and observe what you're doing behind the wheel. They'll be in a the regular Honda tour or whatever next to you. Just to see if you tax and you drive and just to observe your driving habits. And if you're doing something that's frowned upon, you'll hear about it definitely once you get back to the DC. See, my thing, my thing about that, I ain't doing none of it. I don't like that. Uh, that's so my thing is I want to enjoy my 
drive shift and you have basically regulated me to the point where I'm not enjoying myself anymore. So now I'm just not going to do it. I don't, I'm good. You can keep the You can keep the money because the truth is I can work an $80,000 job like you're doing right now. I cannot have rent. That's $12,000. Well, actually more than that. Now I keep saying 12, what it's like niggas being 17, $80,000 a month. So 20, 20 grand. I can get rid of the Mustang that I bought for no reason. What's the note on the Mustang? Four sixty six. That ain't that ain't really that bad. But you know what I'm saying. I ain't think I'm gonna put down on either to break to break the so I wasn't crazy upside down. Yeah. What'd you put ten? I put about ten in man. Oh, so that means you can sell that joint. Yeah, I can. I did their quotes from the um you know, different dealerships or you know, car racks or whatever. And what I own the vehicle, I would actually get a positive, a positive check for what is worth. What do you owe left? Uh, Eighteen. Yeah, the truth is, you could you could stay in the truck and take the lease money from the apartment and put it on the car and pay it off, and just keep but it. Now, see, I was thinking about that because I I just bought the car in March. I got to pay it off by the end of the year. Problem is, I view the dollar different now. Right. Than I did even when I bought that car. So it's like, okay, even if I pay the car off, now I just dumped all this money for a car that's sitting. It ain't making me no money. The truth is, this is what you need to go get right now. You need to sell the car. You need to go get you a minivan, dog. I thought about it. I seen y'all conversations with the, you know, the Honda Odyssey. Z. You got to go get your minivan. Oh, the, the company car. They had a Honda Odyssey. It was nice. Uh, Very gracious, nice. You know? Man, you can go get you a 2014 minivan for like $4,500, bro. And that shit will never stop running. And my thing is, you're just using it to leave at terminals. And if you have to move out of your truck, you got a minivan. You put everything in the minivan and bounce. Yeah. It's the perfect trucker car. I can't put none in the Mustang. You can't you can't even a day. <laughs> All you can do is put... So, oh. Uh, a, a bag in the back. Maybe if you keep a small TV in the back. You got the back seat, right? Or did you get the one with no back seat? They got like two seats, but it's technically you just throw a butt bag or something back there. Ain't no rolling bag back there. For so like you said, TV, duffel bag, That's maybe it. your microwave in the trunk. That's You're it. done. You're done. But if you, I done found minivans for my minivan was nineteen hundred, bro. Nineteen hundred, and I and I'm and I let me tell you something, bro. I don't even drive my F one fifty no more. I literally don't take it out the garage for months at a time. It's cheaper on gas. I put like thirty dollars in gas in it. it. The parts are cheap. It never breaks down, and I'm just chilling. And I, and now when I go to a job, I just leave it at any terminal because it's an old B van. No one cares. I just leave it at any terminal. I ain't worrying about the joint. When I get off, I crank it. It cranks up, and I'm out of there, man. It's that. How many simple. miles you had on the van when you got it? Cause I'll be seeing them. They had like two hundred twenty thousand. I bought mine with two hundred and fifty-one thousand miles on it, and it has no light on. AC works, doors work, leather interior. Nineteen hundred bucks. All I did to it was, uh, my boy Phil put on, um, cause I, it was so cheap. I was just start throwing parts at the joint. So I, I put on like new parts on it. I put a uh, new water pump. Just did, nothing went out. I just was just throwing parts at it for cheap. Parts was like $100, $50, $60. So I done damn near changed out everything on the, on the truck. So if I if I walked away right now, I probably spent $3,000 on this car. And it, it totally runs. AC got back AC, DVD player, the whole shit. I, I got it tinted, put rims on it because I'm still ghetto. But I mean, I bought, put Honda Accord rims on it from eBay, them joints was 60, 80 bucks a pop. I got like Honda Accord five stars on it. I tinted it all the way around. And I'm 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 G riding that joint. I'm the ride having the ball. And now my truck is just it it doesn't make sense to drive it. It's too it, the, the gas on it alone means it doesn't make sense to drive it no more. It gets like twelve miles. Touch on every time I man, I just had some unexpected downtime for Labor Day. As soon as I hop in the car, gas. Sixty dollars for a fill up because it's ninety three premium. You gotta put premium in this thing. Yeah. Jeez, bro. And you got the V six? Oh. Nah, it's eight. Coyote. Is, is it? Is it manual? Yeah, six speed manual. You. It, <laughs> it's nice. It's, it's it's lovely. It's gonna be tough to get rid of it, but it's like you can make it. You gotta make a gangster decision. The truth is, if you're trying to be 
live in the truck, you have no garage to keep it in. So it's like those type of cars are for people who have their end result house and they got a garage to leave it. And that's why I'm willing to, you know, sacrifice it because a lot of the other folks who not doing what I'm doing, as for like sacrificing and trying mm-hmm. to stay out of the truck or whatever. They're like, yeah, man, keep it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it makes no sense. No, leave it at your daddy's house. Okay. Let your dad whip the joint. <laughs> That's why I got the manual, because ain't nobody asked to drive it. True. Do he have a do he have a garage he can leave it in or he got something in this place in the garage? They got they got a garage, you know. Thought about leaving a different family members. Some of my uncles, I can't trust them with it. They'll be driving it. I'm like, man, I left this joint with this many miles on it. I can't even back. It got an extra thousand miles. Mm-hmm. Leave it leave it with your leave it with your pop. Leave it I, and and I would just say, you know, I'm gonna leave it here. Until I figure out what, because for real, the reason why that makes sense, because if you're trying to sell it, you leave it at your dad's house, he can be the contact for the sale because you're not there. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's hard to do it when you're on the road. So if you leave it there and then people show, hey, I want to buy the Mustang, he can say yeah or nay or whatever and sell it and collect the money and all that type of stuff. So it's like, I would leave it at my pop's house because I left my Benz with my, he broke it. He broke my freaking Benz. He ain't going to admit it, but he messed the, uh, uh, uh. And I'm like, Dad, you got three cars. Why was you even driving my? He was just G riding my Benz, bro, for no reason, and it ended up breaking down. But I mean, with something like that, I tell people all the time, you'll learn in in time that a lot of this shit you don't need. You do not need it. You could get you a beat up minivan that ain't even gonna be beat up. You can get you a three thousand dollar minivan and always have a ride to your next job. Always have a place to leave your stuff. So when you get out of the truck and you switching jobs, you can just leave it in the minivan till you get the next job and just transfer it right to where it's going. That's it. Oh, well, you your spot's in Illinois and the new job is 1,600 miles away in Texas. That's nothing to a Honda minivan. You just hop in the Honda minivan. You're talking about that's $60 to get to Texas. That's $60, $100 to get to Texas. You just drive it down to Texas and leave it there. Leave it there. Just like, ain't no one going to touch it. It's a minivan, for God's sake. Nobody wants it. But I tell my t- brothers this, they don't want to hear it. Like, nah, nah, I'm a man. I can't try no minivan. Old heads push them all the time, dog. Old dudes used to rock the conversion van with the curtain. I was looking at some last night. <laughs> and a couple of my homies didn't even know what it was. They said, what's the conversion van? I said, man, you behind no time. If I can find one of the old little Odyssey. You know, because I'm planning on taking home to him at the end of the month just for a couple of days because I was going to take it to sell the same because my insurance, you know, was up. Mm-hmm. I paid for the six month policy. They want a nice 15 piece at the end of the month. I'm like, man, if I ain't going to drive this joint to go right to the dealership and sell it back. Man. I paid my insurance for the year on the minivan. Guess how much I paid? Probably a few hundred. 250. Whole year. year? Whole year, 250. That's liability for full coverage. Oh, it's liability. I ain't put no full coverage on that piece of shit. This is liability, baby. I mean, I <laughs> got still, that's still good. I got roadside and all of that, but you know, there's no reason if if I have full coverage when I crash, they're just gonna give me a thousand dollars. Ain't worth nothing. So, uh, uh, that and I talked to the dude. I was like, you know, why is this so cheap? It's like, you know, minivans hardly get in accidents because people got the kids in them. People drive better in them. They don't race them. You know, that they're, they're not. They're not. They're not something that worries the insurance company now a mustang worries the insurance company like you know you have way you have way more engine than you need when you get home you hot boy in that joint like i even got the little thing in it that tracks how i drive and if i do well it'll drop my rate that progressive is a little thing that sticks in there i don't know um, that's that's who i got progressive and i don't i'm gonna rag it uh, you know, occasionally you might hit it up to eighty five. Yeah, but yeah, that's you know, I'm not doing that all. I'm not doing that every day, all day, because about the car, just because I like the way the Coyote engine sounds. Right. You know, so put long two headers on it. I have a Blowmaster Outlaw. So the car screams this loud. Like if I'm going thirty five, you think I'm going eighty? So I can't even really go and drive it how I want to. You know, people first thing you say, "Ops Bobby," say, "Not yet." You know, but hey, I wanted something that can be heard without me having to put the speed and my life right. is in jeopardy. 
See, I'm I'm different. If if a car talks to me, I I have a problem with not saying no. Like I I I read an SS one time, and it was just like, I gotta hit it. I got to. There's no. That's why I don't buy cars like that. Because